Hello artists, welcome to my studio and this little project where I'm going, I'm planning to paint this little frog. I love these frogs. I, I don't know if it's an Amazonian frog or tree frog. I don't know what it is. A friend of mine took this picture and um, his wife challenged me. He, he said I can use any of his photos and his wife challenged me to do this painting. She's doing one herself. What I like about this, well, I like green and I love the combination of compliments. You've got the green and you've got the red. The other thing I like about this is the, um, what do they call this, boho or something where you've got a very fuzzy background. That's normally how I do backgrounds anyway, so I really like that. I will link it. But what I'm going to do right now, I've already transferred it to my, my paper. This is a rough paper. I normally like to use the um, uh, cold pressed, which is has a little bit of texture, but not terribly much. So this is a little different for me. I am going to start with the background wash. I'm going to get out my number eight Neptune oval wash. I'm going to start by wetting the background and then I'm going to pop in mostly greens, fairly light greens, because I'm going to want him to stand out. So I'm going to want him to be the most, um, uh, you couldn't see that, could you? I'm going to want the frog to be the most, to be the focal point, obviously. So I'm going to make these pretty light. I may get darker toward the bottom here and up there, and maybe back here too. Yeah, I probably will. Like I said, I wanted it to be kind of dark up here. Oopsie, that went down a little far. Okay, now I want some variety, so I'm going to... Rinse the brush off, blot it on my fabric, and get some just kind of more of yellow. Just to add a little bit of variety in here. I'm going to go get some blue. Because the background is it's going to be fine. Now, this, the blue in his arm, he's got a little blue in his arm right there. And I'm going to make it a cerulean blue, so I'm going to add a little blue up here. Not too much. This is where we spend a little time, a little energy, get the details going right. Now when you have something, you see this puddle here? It shouldn't exactly be happening like that, but the paper's not 100%. Um, flat. Rarely is your paper, even on a block, 100% flat. So we're going to just play with it a little bit. If we can take the water away, it's going to make it easier to keep the circles. All right, so I'm going to watch my edges as this dries, but um, and that's what I'm going to do next. Let it dry. So as you can see, I've done a little bit of detail in here. I've added some yellow, I've added some blue, and I've added red to his eyes. I've also um, combined in his eye, I wanted it to be kind of orangey, but I wanted little peaks of yellow because your eye is kind of amorphous. It's got different things in there that shift back and forth. So I've been, I added drops of red on top of the initial layer and now I'm adding little, little drops of yellow. What I'm going for here is I wanted to get some of these little spaces done. I want to, um, I put the lemon yellow in here for his body, but then I wanted some variety, so I added gamboge. I put the cerulean, which I had in the background, into this. In this background, I added some of the reds that I'm going to have in the leaf. This is a, a bird of paradise flower. Um, and it's going to have some orangey red. His eyes are going to be orangey red, as are his toes. Um, so we want to make sure some of that color, even though it's disguised as a combination of green and red, we want to make some of that color into the background. Same. So again, we're going to wait for it to dry. All right, now we're back. Um, I've done a bit on our little fella here. Not a whole lot since you saw me last, but I'm going to go into the major greens and oranges now. I think what I might want to start with are the oranges because they're nice and bright and they're kind. So I can get 
right into those little toes. I want to make those toes exactly round. Now one of the things that's tricky, if you look at these toes here, looking at the picture, they're all orange. But what differentiates this toe end from the knuckle and this toe from that webbing part there is a very slight difference in color. I'm going to rinse my brush off and dry it, and I'm going to go in and pick up a little red, just plain red, to see if I can blend that in somewhere that will make a difference. And we're going to go in. I want to actually pull some color out of this because that's too dark. It's the uppermost. It's the closest to the sun. So is this. That's good. Now I'm going to go, because I don't want to paint near his toes right now, I'm going to go into, I think I can paint these parts. So I'm going to paint this part of the flower. Now I'm going to go down and do some of these guys in here. So, like the dead tip of a leaf. All right. Okay, now that's done. I think it might be time to do his tummy. His tummy is kind of a brownish color. Okay, so this is my shadow color. This is my QBO combined with ultramarine blue, which makes, as I've said before, a nice, well, I use it for um, beach sand. I use it for shadows, um, depending on how much water or how much uh, pigment I have in it. I'll use it for a variety of different things. I'm going right over the yellow because this is all in shade. And I'll take some of this out. So those were nice little puddles, which were going to get really dark as they dried. There we go. The color that I wanted to keep. So now we're going to let a little bit of this dry, and I'll be back. All right, time to get brave. Let's do his green body. to give this a little differentiation, this green color. So this green color is not going to match exactly the color of the leaf or the petal on the um, bird of paradise or the green of the background. I've added just, just, just a teeny, teeny bit of blue to this green, just ever so slightly, a little bit. And we're going to pull back a little bit on the other side of his nostril. Comes over to this eye. So now we're going to let this part dry. When I come back, we're going to do his eye. I added just a little bit of shading here and there and there. Just so you don't think I'm cheating on you. I just wanted you to know. Now we're going to go in with some pretty dark black. And sometimes black has to be redone. You have to reapply it. 
But this black is, so, so the pupil on a reptile is vertical and it goes all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. Yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to put another black on here. Um, I also want to add just a touch of black over here. So even though we can't really see his pupil, we have an indication that it's there. And then around his eye, I hope this is dry enough. We have a nice bit of mascara. We also have some spotty things on the blue sides. Let me add a little more blue to that. Water it down a bit. And right in here we have some... It's not very dark. We have some reptilian spots. I'm just going to put in a little bit of shadow and spottiness just so our little guy knows we care about him. Reptiles also tend to have actual spots, dots, humps, little bumps on their skin. So we want to imply a few of those. And a few things, a few little added touches down here. This is also, um, I'm adding a little bit of, you could call it outlines, you could call it whatever you want to call it, but um, it's showing kind of where his creases are. This little guy's got some body shapes that kind of imply creases. I also want to be able to tell where that toe ends and that toe begins. And this is really the detail work that comes after. Um, but I'm, as usual, jumping the gun just a little bit. There are can't tell if these are my pencil lines or shadows on the little fella, but I'm gonna make them be little shadows. I want a little more definition, a little more roundness, a little more volume, I guess, is what this gives us. His little knee is on top, and you can't really see that, so I'm going to give him a little, a little shadow in there and in there. And then I'm going to blend. I'm going to blend some of these. Some of these. And these. When you've got a round shape, it's okay to have one hard line. That's where another thing comes and they meet. So like my fingers, there's a hard line there. But when this shadow comes out, it's rounded because my fingers are rounded and so is his little leg. And this is looking a little too hard, so I'm going to soften this up a bit. All right, now there's that. I want to get a little bit, I, I can't see the black line in the picture on his far eye, but I know that that skin goes around his eyeball. So I'm gonna add a little darker green. 
just because I want that differentiation. And also add a little bit of that over to here. And I'm going to add it. I don't know if this is an ear hole or what little scary or secretive reptilian thing that is, but it just looked like it needed some definition. So does this, this needs to be a little darker in here. And so does this, because his little mouth goes over his little jaw. Now I'm gonna soften a few of those. All right, so I'm gonna do it with my bigger brush. paper as much as you need it. It's always easier for me to run a line up when I can see it and that's why I keep turning this so that I can see the edge. Picture reads like this should be green, but I don't like that idea, so I'll let it. So I've got some little tiny parts that I need to have be real light. This one. shadowed in here. So I added a little ultramarine blue to my green mixture. And then I'm going to blend that out both sides. I think it may be time to finish our little fellow up here. Let's get a nice mix of green. Alrighty. Now we are going to do this the same way we've done the others. This is a rounded edge, so we're going to make a nice dark stripe down the middle and then soften the edges up. Rinsing the brush off, drying it out, and then softening off the edges, which means bringing clear water between the edge, between the green that we just put down and the edge of the leaf. And this guy. No, I need more blue. 
And just to finish up a few things, I think I want to put a little more darkness behind the little fork because I want to punch him up and make him a little bit more noticeable, a little more obvious. So I'm going to put my shadow color underneath his tummy. Mm, that's the other thing I want to do is I want to delineate that line around his eye. Now I can either do that with pen or I can do that with watercolor. Watercolor is going to be more challenging. I'm going to give him one more little nudge on his nose to darken that. Remembering that watercolor always dries back about 30%. I think the little feller's done. Thanks for sticking with me. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll uh, share your version of this little Costa Rican tree frog um, if you paint it. Thanks, take care, see you in the next time.